My name is Bennett Aaron. I'm a writer and stand-up comedian. Seven years ago, I was a victim of identity theft, and my wife and I lost everything. Identity theft has now become one of the fastest growing crimes, and I'm really not happy about it. Ugh! To show the government how easy it still is to steal an identity, I plan to become an ID thief myself for the next 30 days. My heart really was just pounding. Risking prosecution. That is his pin number. And even a prison sentence. Seven years ago, my wife and I were about to buy our first home here in North London. Well, this is what we're going to buy. We're going to buy one of these houses. One of these lovely little three-bedroom houses. It had a sweet back garden, school around the corner. Everything we've been looking forward to, starting a family. Overnight, my dream, my wife's dreams were shattered. One minute I was about to become a homeowner. The next I was homeless and up to my eyes in debt that wasn't mine. All thanks to the work of an identity thief. The shocking thing was how easy it was for him to steal my identity from one piece of junk mail. Just from that, he opened loads of accounts in my name, got charge cards in my name, gave me bad debt, and then we lost the mortgage and we lost the house and we lost everything just on that one piece of, of junk mail. Uh, just shocking. I've still not managed to get on the property ladder. And even now, other people could face the same problems as nothing seems to have changed. According to one credit reference agency, ID theft crime figures have gone up 200% since I became a victim. I've got a meeting in the Home Office in 30 days' time. By then, if I can, I want to go along with a whole bunch of evidence and go, look, this proves how easy it is to steal somebody's identity. Something has to be done. Legislation has to be put into place to stop it from happening. That's my plan. ID theft is when somebody steals your name and gets credit in your name, which will then affect your credit rating and will put you in debt, and it won't be your fault and then you'll have to spend months and months and months trying to clear your name, trying to prove to people that it's not you, it's somebody who's just using your name. And it's the most soul-destroying thing. Being a victim of identity theft doesn't necessarily mean having your cash stolen, but it can have other far-reaching effects. Your credit rating can be destroyed, so when you apply for loans, credit cards and mortgages, you're turned down. Back then, I was just about to start my own family and buy my own home. But the debts of the thief who stole my identity forced me and my pregnant wife back under my parents' roof. I've only recently told my parents the whole story. You didn't tell us anything. They've still not quite forgiven me. Nothing about the, nothing about the identity fraud. Not that we knew at the time. But... The reason I didn't go into the whole detail about what the guy had done is I didn't want to worry you or upset your water we family we want we want we support you i know he was getting tired he was getting frustrated and unfortunately letting out his frustration on the family here okay. now thinking back i can understand but he should have shared it with us it was a terrible time they went through that wasn't the best thing to do and the fact that we were staying here we should have said everything and laid everything out but at the time i just thought i could deal with it I hadn't realised coming um, to my parents' house was going to bring back all the memories and making it so emotional, which it has done. <laughs> I need a bit of time alone to help me figure out whose identity I should steal to make my point to the Home Office. Unfortunately, this is the only property ladder I can get on. I've collected comics since I was about eight. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't read these anymore. I mean, you know, obviously I've grown up now. I'd make a good superhero. I'd have the power of indecision. I could be Wonder Man. Where they go, oh, what are you going to do, Wonder Man? And I'll go, I wonder. Who's your favourite? Oh, I don't really have a favourite. I mean, it's just, you know, this is for children, really. I just, you know, categorise them and... Uh, no, but seriously. Spider-Man. If I am going to steal an identity, why not make it someone with a secret identity themselves? Someone like Spider-Man. 
I'm going to try and steal somebody's identity in 30 days. I'm not going to find a Mr. Spider-Man, so I'm going to take the identity, if I can, of Peter Parker, if there are any. And there are. Look, I've got two. There we go. Two Peter Parkers. So I'm going to go after those. Two targets mean I can try out different ID fraudsters' techniques and hopefully show the Home Office the weaknesses in the system. The point I'm trying to make is the fact that it's easy to steal someone's identity. And if it is easy to steal someone's identity just from this information, then I can go to the government and go, look, look what I've managed to do with nothing. Something's got to be done about this. That's the only point I'm trying to make. I like the idea of being the little man who fights back and wins out at the end. So I'm going to be Peter Parker. There are just 25 days to go before my showdown with the Home Office. I must start gathering proof to show them the ease of ID theft fast. One of the most common ploys is bin raiding. So I'm about to pay a late night visit to my first Peter Parker target. Stealing someone's rubbish is illegal. Right, and put my, uh, put my gloves on. Not to mention unhygienic. So what I'm going to do, I park around the corner of Peter Parker's house and uh, I'm going to try and take his rubbish and I'm going to see if there's anything in it that I can use. I'm a little bit anxious. I worry about getting caught. That, that isn't the most encouraging sound. So I've got to hope there's a black bag out. I've got to, I've got to hope there's nothing, there's something in it. And I'm going to hope that uh, nobody catches me. <laughs> Substantially more nervous than I thought I was going to be. I really thought this would just be a bit of fun. Uh, it's suddenly turned into a crime. Do you reckon anyone's got a tip off about <laughs> what I'm about to do? There's a lot of police around. So, and I'm just going to drive past and see if he's put his rubbish out. And he hasn't. In fact, yes, he has. Jen, this is going to sound really paranoid. I swear there's a car following me. Turning the other way. What I'm about to do carries up to a 10 year prison sentence. I hope this is worth the risk. <laughs> I just stole somebody's rubbish and my heart really was just pounding. I'm going down for 10 stretch. My name's Bennett Aaron. In 1998, I was financially ruined by identity theft. Tonight, I'm stealing rubbish bins and hunting for personal documents inside to find out how simple ID theft is in time for a meeting with the Home Office in 25 days. These bags belong to a man who shares the name of my childhood hero's alter ego, Peter Parker. another envelope from a bank. Oh, it's another letter from BT. Excellent. Very nice. Keep that. <laughs> the piece of the jigsaw. That is his pin number. Look at that. That's a Barclays Bank. 
Dear Mr. Parker, the new personal security passcode you requested is important to keep it secret. Once you have memorized the number, please destroy this letter. So what have I got? I've got his name, I've got his address. I've got his security passcode. Maybe I could ring up the bank and get money transferred into my account. Don't know. Uh, what I've got is great. It's really good. But if I'm going to use the pin, unless I'm going to steal his wallet, I'm going to need the matching bank statement to go with it. So I'm going to have to go back next Monday night and do another bin raid, which I shouldn't be looking forward to, but I am a bit. It's the next night, and it's time to try out another ID thief's technique, telephone cold calling. This time, my target is the second Peter Parker I found in the phone book. How far will I get extracting personal details from a complete stranger? I need to get something in Peter Parker's name, but I think I'm going to need his date of birth. I don't think I can just ring him up and say, you don't know me, can I have your date of birth? Hello, is Mr. Parker there, please? Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Stevenson. I'm calling from BS Bank. Um, we've had an application for a credit card in your name. I just want to clarify that it is the right person before we go ahead processing it. The application came through, um, one moment, on the 25th of January. You haven't done? No. Uh, well, can I, can I just check the details, in case there's a, a, a different person with the same name? If I can get Mr. Parker to give me his date of birth, and I were a real ID thief, I could buy myself hundreds of pounds of goods They're using his correct. identity. Right, that's very odd. Can I check your date of birth, please? The cash wouldn't come out of his pocket, but it could wreck his credit rating and stop him getting loans, credit cards and mortgages. Ah, uh, right. Then we, it's, uh, it's obviously a different person. Right, so there's obviously a confusion with our system. Um, awfully sorry about that. I'll make sure this doesn't get processed. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I've got his date of birth. This seemingly harmless bit of personal information, plus a delivery address, would give a real ID thief a field day. So that's the second catalogue I've ordered. I've now got two catalogue accounts and it was really, really easy. Well, a good thing for Peter Parker would be to order a, a camera. I think that's in keeping with the whole um, Peter Parker Spider-Man theme. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. Add to favourites, and to bag. I've already ordered a camera, so I need to order something else. But I don't know what. Right, footwear. Oh look, they got men's stuff as well. That's not going to order. Four pairs of shoes, exactly the same. Because a spider's got eight legs. Colour, black. Price, 29.99. Quantity, <laughs> four. <laughs> I don't think the government do enough to make mail order companies check their customers are who they say they are. Some catalogue companies are more thorough than others. But ID thieves can try their luck from an abundance of companies with up to £200 credit on each. Really, really easy. It's the next morning. Sharon. I'm off Hello. to meet someone who really was a victim of a telephone cold calling scam. Eight weeks ago, Sharon gave her details to a person who said they worked for a company offering a free holiday. It ended up costing her dearly. They were very accurate. They'd got my date of birth um, and I recollected I'd had very strange conversations over telephone whilst at work. I'd had several calls. I distinctly remember one call purportedly from a company who had said that my name had been given to them and they'd chosen me to experience a new hotel chain. So I said yes and I gave my details and I do remember giving my name and address. Um, I can't remember if I'd given my date of birth but I did give quite a lot of information about myself and then I waited for the information to come through the post to confirm the appointment and nothing came. And I feel as if I've been raped and invaded. 
you know, as if some invisible burglar has come and, you know, took things from me. What I want to know is how you found out. A lady had uh, managed to secure um, £12,000 worth of, um, of a loan. She'd actually applied for this on a car forecourt, you know, you know, car salesman signed her up and she'd produced several pieces of identification that verified that this lady was me. The young lady in question drove away with an Audi sports car. They gave it to her? They gave her the car? Yep. Driven away with that car. So I am a bit paranoid. You sort of start thinking to yourself, what did I do wrong? What stupid things have I been doing? So, you know, it was a real shock. You know, I really do empathise with Sharon. It's a horrible thing, horrible thing to have to go through. It just makes me that much more determined to do what I'm doing, to prove to the government that this should be stopped and that something should be put into place to stop it from happening to other people. People are clearly vulnerable to bin raiding and cold calling. But might ID theft be harder to pull off when you're standing face to face with your potential victim? I'm off to a shopping centre in my Welsh homeland to pose as an official figure. Eighty percent of Welsh people say they're more frightened of ID theft than anything else, even spiders. Can I manipulate this fear to defraud people into giving me their private bank details? I don't know, I reckon maybe for every hundred people that look, I might get one. I'm going to wear a suit and a tie and I better get changed. <laughs> know about uh, identity fraud. It's the biggest growing crime in the UK. Uh, it could be happening to you now, it could be happening to this gentleman at this moment. <coughs> right, there we are then. How was that? Look? Fantastic. It's got a PIN number, last three digits, security code. Thank you very much indeed. For the card, uh, yeah, for the card number down there. Aren't people really, really trusting? You want all my card number in? Uh, the ones that you want to protect, really. So, I mean, to be fair to them, I'm a genuinely nice guy. Almost everybody who's come over has filled it in. This is a lot easier than I was expecting. Nobody else will see all these. No, 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 no. Gosh, no, no. Nobody sees this. These are personal details. So no, it's all, uh, <laughs> it's all legitimate and above board. All the information you've given me now, I've taken off you fraudulently that the whole thing is actually a scam to see how many people will actually give a complete stranger their details. You give me all the information that I need now to open an account in your name and people have been giving me their information all day. I thought we might get one or two. I didn't think that people would be so willing to come over and, uh, and hand over information. I mean, I generally didn't. Yeah, it's about 20 something. For two hours, 20 people. Yeah, that's not bad going or really bad going, depending on which way you look at it. Only two people out of 20 refused to give me their details. I'm obviously destroying this information, but it has made me wonder, what is being done to protect the public? If I'm going to confront the Home Office in 20 days' time, I need to have a watertight case. Hi. I'm off to see Tom Craig, a senior detective at CID at the time of my case and now a consultant fraud specialist to ask him whether he thinks ID cards might solve the problem. The government say that identity cards are going to be the answer to curbing ID theft. Do you think that is going to be the case? I don't think it's going to curb ID theft. In fact, it's going to help the criminals. Because if you get through the system, you've got the document that allows you access. But you've still got the problem with interceptions, theft in the post, people having their, st their identity cards stolen from them, and also the infiltration of government departments to get into the system to see what can be taken out and what can be abused. It makes it a nightmare to administer. An interesting question I'd like to ask you. How do you feel about being a victim? Uh, it hurts. It ruins your life. You can't sleep, you can't think about anything else, you don't know what's going to happen next. Um, 
if you get a phone call, you don't know it's, if it's for you or for the person who's pretending to be you. You feel cheated. You feel desperately alone, which is ironic because there's actually now two of you. <laughs> and the worst part is the fact that you have to prove that you were who you say you are and not the person who's pretending to be you. You have to convince the police. You have to convince companies that you are the innocent party. Something's got to be done. Uh, the government, the companies, the police, as well as individuals, have to do something. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much indeed. I arrived back at the office to find an unexpected letter from one of the catalogue companies I applied to pretending to be Peter Parker. All I'm worried about is the things are starting to unravel, and I just hope they're not. This is the camera, which they confirmed by email was happening, and apparently now it's not. Damn. Could you please contact me on this number during normal office hours? Thank you for anticipation for your help in this matter. Right, so I'm going to have to call them, but I haven't got any of his details on this. I'm going to have to get his details and then call the number. So there's obviously something wrong with the um, application. I thought that was fine. I thought this was going through. I have to say, identity theft requires nerves of steel. I'm going to, I'm going to call the number and find out. Uh, I'm not sure what questions are going to ask me, but I'm going to find out if I can get away with the information I've got. Date of birth, address, old address, phone number. I hope this isn't going to fall through. I hope I can get away with it a bit. This would be a shame to have gone this far and then nothing. Uh, my, I've got a, I haven't got an account number, I've got a reference number. Uh, I haven't got my account number to hand. My name is Peter Parker. 1981. Uh, how old am I? Uh, that's an odd question, you've got my date of birth there. Eh? Right, um, 34? On what grounds? But that doesn't make any sense. No, 24, not 34. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said, uh, I sorry, I wouldn't have said 34. How could I have said 34 if I'm 24? So, and I have to send you something because, because I gave you my wrong age. So I'm not meeting all the criteria for, for credit. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye, -bye. Bye. That was my fault. That's so stupid. They asked me for my date of birth, which I had, and then he said to me, how old are you? And I couldn't work out quick enough how old I was meant to be. Um, right, well, that's fallen through. Oh, God. If I was a real fraudster, I'm sure I would have had that ready and I would have had the age because I would have known to expect that. I can't believe I'm actually annoyed that they caught me out. It's great that some of them are checking. Oh, uh, and an apology to Mr Jenkins, who taught me sums. That Peter Parker has escaped my clutches as I failed to steal his ID. But I've still got the other Peter Parker in my sights. Monday, dustbin day, and I'm back at the first Peter Parker's house in my role as ID thief to show the government that identity theft is too easy. Last week I raided Mr Parker's bins and found his pin. I've returned to hunt for the matching bank statement. Alright, but well the bag is there, there's only one bag there. I'm going to go around once more, run over and get the bag. Oh, there's still people there. I've got a really weird feeling about this tonight. Where's the house? There. I've really got a weird feeling about this. I don't like this feeling at all.
Well, we've got it. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. God. Oh. It's not the bank statement I wanted. Look at this, look at this, look at this. It's something even better. Oh, wow, what a guy. That's um, an application for a bank. Uh, that's an application for a bank account. I reckon I might be able to, I might be able to, you know what, I might be able to change the address on the bank account. I might be able to change the address on the bank account. Oh, that's great, okay. The next morning, there's a surprise for me. A package from one of the catalogue companies I'd applied to using Peter Parker's identity. Uh, a spider has eight legs. The fact that it was so easy to order stuff in somebody else's name is not particularly funny. All I had was his name and the address he now lives at. That's all I had. And with that, I managed to get this sent to a completely different address. That was very, very easy. With my home office meeting just around the corner, it's time to close the case on Peter Parker. For the past couple of weeks, I found important documents in his rubbish, including bank application forms and, incredibly, his PIN. I rang Peter Parker this morning and told him that I'd managed to steal his identity. He's agreed to meet me. Look, there's his house. Look how much lighter it is when it's not in the middle of the night. Can you hear my heart pounding on the thing? Hello. Hello, Peter Parker? Yes. Hello, Hi. I'm Peter Parker. Hello. <laughs> nice to I'm meet sorry. you. Sorry. I'm also Peter Parker. Oh, where would you He like actually to looks like me. Are you comfortable there? That's lovely. Thank you very much. Yes, no, I, I, uh, I actually am Peter Parker. Over the, over the last three weeks, mm. I've managed to take your identity. Uh, yes. And with the information I've got, I could, if I was a fraudster, which I'm not, get a driving license in your name, get birth certificate in your name, open several accounts, open several credit cards. This is, uh, this is the key to how I did it. Just... <laughs> It looks like a load of old rubbish. This is the rubbish you've been throwing away over the last couple of weeks. And I've been coming round oh my on a Monday God. night when you throw your rubbish away. <laughs> <laughs> that really is unbelievable. You really actually came and took the bags. Oh, this is all your rubbish. <laughs> you did throw stuff away. Yes. You mean stuff that had my name and address on it? You threw away these. Just yes. letters. Yeah. They've all got your name and address yeah. unopened, yeah. all with your name yes. uh, and address on them, yeah. which can be used. Yeah. Then, which I got very excited about, you threw away these. Yeah. This is a letter that you received. Yeah. With this was an application form for a bank account. Yeah. All I did was cross out the address, yeah. say that you've moved here. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. This is a utility bill. Uh, again, with your name and address on it, this is the same thing from the same company. The name and address on it, your customer number. The customer account number, yes. So, if I wanted to, I could ring them up, tell them I've changed address, here's my account number, this is the address I was at. Yeah. And I'd now get a utility bill at the new address yeah. in your name. Yeah. And then with this, I could have applied for a driving licence in yes. your name. <laughs> it gets worse and worse, doesn't it? And then this came through, I managed to get this, but this was just, you'd obviously... Uh, opened a pin number or something. Yeah. But I assume you destroyed the pin. Yeah, I, yes, I, <laughs> I am better than that. No, I mean, I would have, have really destroyed the pin. What you actually did is that you ripped it up yeah. and you threw it in the bin. <laughs> God. Yeah, well, that is stupid. I, th I mean, I, I hold up my hand, we throw stuff up, we rip it up, and we think that's the end of it. Yeah. You did, you know, you ripped it up. 
Yeah. Yet he still threw it away. He makes the point very well about how careless we can be. It is the sort of thing we don't give a second thought to, and, and we ought to. Yeah, but it's just yes. amazing what you're able to get. Yes. I'm just astonished at how easy it, this is. I mean, it is, it's, of course, it's extremely worrying. You know, I'm very glad uh, <laughs> it's him who's done it, not someone else. With the catalogue, which you uh, so kindly opened, I've ordered this stuff in your name, so thanks for that. Because um, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and because a spider has got eight legs, what I've done is order pairs of identical shoes, God. which are all in here. And very cheap and nasty they are too. <laughs> <laughs> One pair would be more than enough, thank you very much. <laughs> OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I had a uh, shock reaction, but it just shows how vulnerable people are. It just shows how easy this crime is to carry out. So I've managed to steal the identity of Peter Parker. But now, it's time to move on. I'm back to being me again. With just two weeks before my meeting with the Home Office, it's time to assess how much evidence I have. Well, I think all this information I've managed to accumulate is great. And the stuff I got from Peter Parker is like a, a treasure chest to an identity thief. My only slight reservation, to be truthful, is that this isn't enough. All the stuff I've got here, all the stuff I've been accumulating, isn't enough to prove to the Home Office how huge a problem this is and how it affects people so badly. I think they'll just look at this information and just go, oh yeah, that's terrible. It's... But remember, this is still seen as a victimless crime and they'll go, yeah, well, you know, they haven't had to pay money back and all these things, this guy shouldn't have thrown the stuff away. And... So I've got to do something else, something bigger to prove the point that I want to make. And I think the only way I can do that, as, uh, as ridiculous as it sounds, the only way I can do that is to actually steal the identity of somebody in the government. I can't think of anything else to do. I don't know how far I'll get with it, but if I am going to do it, I'm going to try and steal the identity of the Home Secretary. The man who has that job, as I choose my target, is Charles Clark. Of course, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Over the next few days, I set about stealing the identity of one of the highest profile politicians in the country. I want to steal one of Charles Clark's most important pieces of ID, his driving license. It's a two-stage process. Oh yes, Charles Rodway Clark. There it is, Charles Clark's birth certificate. All the information on there, yeah, the first step. It's easy to order up someone's birth certificate. You can do it on the internet from the comfort of your own home, even in your pajamas. Stage two of stealing a driving license is much riskier. I'm sending in this driving license and it says on the driving license, I understand that it's a criminal offence to make a false declaration to get a driving license and that do, to do so can lead to prosecution and a maximum penalty of up to two years imprisonment and a fine of up to a thousand pound. I'm really not a hundred percent sure if this is such a good idea now. Everything that I've been finding out about what proof of identity is needed, a driving license and a passport are the two most important documents. Date of birth, which is on here, which is 21st of September 1950. I'm going to have to change the address to a false address, obviously. So if I can get a license in his name, it'll prove how easy it is to do. I'm not specifically attacking DVLA procedures. On this occasion, I'm choosing to try and steal a driving license. But real fraudsters also target other key documentation, like passports. I've got to sign the back of the photograph, and I just need to put the photo on the form. That's that, ready to post. There's no going back now. It's a few days later. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, 
How ridiculous is that? That is Charles Clark's driving license with my photo on it. Wow, how easy is that? I've got all the proof I need to impress the Home Office, but at what cost? Well, £19 actually. Once a real fraudster has key pieces of documentation, then the sky can be the limit, or at least your credit limit. Such hot property is making me nervous. This afternoon, my mum and dad are coming over. Hello. Hello. I know I have to learn from past mistakes and tell them what I'm up to. Hello. Hello. Just to let you know what I'm doing. I was going to find somebody to take their identity. I found somebody. Um, I'm trying to take the identity of a politician. Okay. You were allowed to do this, Benny. Get a slap in the face for this, wouldn't you? Don't you think it's a bit risky what you're doing? Well... I know you're, have trying, you, have I know you got, you're trying to prove a point. I'm trying I to prove a point, that. and I want to, and it's the first time that I've ever wanted to do something that's in any way politically based, or to try and make a difference, or to try and do something. Have you had permission from anybody to do this? You can't do that, can you? Could you be prosecuted for what you've done? Yes. Gee. I mean, I won't go into details, but I've actually got important documentation in the name of a politician, which is locked up in a safe. Um, Excuse me. I don't want him to be an accessory after the fact. I admire what you do, I understand what you do, but all I'm concerned about okay, is how about deep this. you're getting yourself involved that you will get into your own quagmire, you won't get out of it, and that's what I'm worried about. Well, unfortunately, it's got to the stage now. You can always stop. No, I can't now. Of course you can. You've got two children to support. No, I know that I've got two children to support. That's the thing that's been keeping me awake. I'm to do um, something else for me to worry about. I know he's going and I understand what he's saying, but I hope he hasn't bitten out too much. There, that's what I was talking about that I've had over the last few days, right? This is all junk mail, right? Three, four, five, six, seven pieces, right, in the last few days. Right, and some of them have got, you know, I mean, they've all got my name and address on them. I haven't asked for any of them, I've not requested any of them. It's the day before my meeting with the Home Office. Hello, Ben is speaking. Or at least I thought it was. Yes. Oh, hello. Oh, right. Puppy, puppy, you loved it. Speak. Oh, do you know what? And are they rearranging it? Santa. Right, so... No, I, re I... Right, no, of course, I appreciate that, but it's just that we would... Yeah. Well, is there any other date that he can do? So definitely not within the next couple of weeks. OK, well, can I call you in the next couple of days just to find out? Well, I don't I mean, just in case... Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Bye. They cancel the meeting with the the Home Office, and he doesn't know if he's going to be able to do it. I don't know what to do. I mean, if they, if they've cancelled the meeting, it doesn't look as though he can rearrange it. Then, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff that I have? I mean, everything I was doing was aiming towards this meeting. And I, I just said, can we rearrange it? He said, it doesn't look likely at the moment. So I can call him in a couple of days and, and see if there's been any change. We said, it looks unlikely. I'd planned to return Charles Clark's driving license when I had my meeting. What am I supposed to do now? It's Bennett Aaron speaking. It's Bennett Aaron speaking. It's Bennett Aaron speaking. My meeting with the Home Office has been cancelled. 
I'm desperately trying to rearrange it to tell Charles Clark I've stolen his identity. OK, will he definitely call me back? So I've called a few times. You, you have my number, don't you? The Home Office seemed to be stonewalling me, and although I've rather enjoyed being the Home Secretary, it's no fun anymore. If I can't set up a meeting, I've got to find a way of getting Charles Clark's attention. The last letter I posted here was Mr. Clark's driving license application form. I wonder if I'll have such a good result this time. It's five days later and I've still heard nothing back from Charles Clark. I don't want to be him any longer, so I'm going to have to take desperate measures. Today I found out that Charles Clark is going to Prime Minister's questions. So he's coming down from his constituency in Norwich. So I've worked out the route that he'd take from Norwich, where he lives, down to the House of Parliament. And I've got his driving licence, and I need to show him that I've got his driving licence. I need to get rid of it. So the only way I can think of getting rid of it, the only thing I could possibly think about doing, is trying to do some kind of protest, some kind of demonstration. The only problem is, you can't do a demonstration now uh, within half a mile of the House of Parliament. So I'm working out exactly where he's going to be as he comes into London, and I'm going to stand somewhere on that route and make a protest with my placards to try and get his attention for him to try and stop and see me. <laughs> I only have 30 minutes to find my half-mile spot and Big Ben is ticking. Well, it's quarter to 11 and I'm stuck in traffic and they've closed Westminster Bridge. Uh, I'm pretty anxious, really. I've got to measure exactly how far half a mile is. So I want to stand exactly on the half mile spot. Come on! Hello. Can I measure from there? Uh, just going out and back that way, that's all. If the closest I can get to Charles Clark is half a mile, then I'm going to make it inch perfect. Well, I need to finish this. I've done 825 feet and I've got 2,000 something to go. I can't stop and chat. And if Charles Clark doesn't notice me, then maybe he'll spot my posters. That's exactly 2,640 feet, which is half a mile from Parliament. So this is the point I'm going to stand, and if I protest, it's just exactly half a mile. Hopefully it's going to cut past. Mr. Clark! No, that's a woman taking her kids to school. Mr. Clark! No. Hello, Mr. Clark? Mr. Clark? That's him on a motorbike. Mr. Clark? It's not him. Shame I didn't have the meeting. That would have been a bit easier. Well, that was it. I missed the time. He's now in Parliament. I've got his driving licence. I've tried everything now to see him. Everything. I have your license! Mr. Clark! I don't want to be you anymore! Mr. Clark! Do you want your license back? Today's left me shouting in the wind, and worse than that, I'm still Mr. Clark. You can go on the climbing thing if you want to. Do you want to go on the climbing thing? It's been six weeks since my meeting with the Home Office was cancelled and there's been no reply to my letter to Charles Clark. And just my luck, today Clark's been fired. I see now why he's been preoccupied. He can't find 49 foreign ex-cons, so that's why he's a bit busy. Up to 70 in this paper. 
murderers and rapists among 883 foreign criminals lost by Clark. He seems to have lost quite a few things, really, this week. He's also, he's also, um, he's also lost his identity, which he hasn't seemed to have mentioned. Yeah, I'm sure it's up on his to-do list up there on the wall. Call Bennett Aaron, ask for my identity back. Four months after starting this process, I want to close the file on my identity theft. I had no idea when I applied for this that I'd be able to get away with it and that they'd, sent me, they'd actually send me Charles Clark's driving licence. I had no idea. I'm going to get the birth certificate. Oh, easy. So, for all intents and purposes, I've still got Charles Clark's identity, which I don't want anymore because it's given me sleepless nights. I'm pleased with myself because of what I've managed to do because I had no idea that that I'd managed to do it. So I'm pleased I've done that, and I'm disappointed I haven't been able to show them what I've done. And hope that other people can do something about the problem, because I've done as much as I can do. I really hadn't thought that much about the identity theft for quite a while. And when I started doing this, when I started doing this program and all the memories came back about it, I'd forgotten how upsetting a time it was, because I sort of put it at the back of my mind. And it really was a really, really upsetting time. I suppose what it's done, it's made me realize, even though I lost a lot of the time when my identity was still, and I've realized, it's made me realize what I, what I do have. You know, I've got a, a wonderful wife and fantastic children, great parents and great family. It's time for me to move on. I've had enough of having this. I've had enough of being Charles Clark and having his identity, so I want this to finish. I wanted to give this back to him, said I could have ended it all, but now I haven't been able to see him. So in the letter I said that I destroy his documentation, so that's what I'm going to have to do now is cut it up. <sighs> All right, here goes. I only hope that Charles Clark's replacement, yeah. the new Home Secretary, plans to make ID theft a priority. I'm not sure I can face stealing his identity.